Hey, 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 what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? CoinOp TV subscribers, it is Robert Walkner here with another CoinOp TV live and interactive show talking Save Disney Infinity. If you guys didn't know, Disney Infinity was canceled. The announcement, the official information came out uh, about a few days ago, a week ago, or something like that. And there's been a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, a lot of fallout, a lot of um, emotions shall we say, about the decision for Disney's head honchos, CEOs, um, presidents, Bob Iger, and all those guys to uh, discontinue the series because, like you, I'm a big fan of Disney Infinity. I've been making a lot of Disney Infinity videos. So um, we're doing a sort of another follow-up video that's touching on the Save Disney Infinity campaign. And as a special guest, I got my buddy Dan over at Disney Infinity Codes and um, – his also his bricks to life website. So Dan, good to see you, buddy. What's up, guys? Hello, <laughs> welcome, welcome to Coin Up TV podcast. <laughs> the number Actually, one, the number one place on the web to get all your gaming news. Oh yes, well I, I don't know if I'd say that. It's, it's from the uh, most attractive YouTuber there is. I wouldn't say that either. <laughs> uh, I would say so attractive. Thank you for thank you for watching. Only beautiful people watch the show. We all know that. So I, I don't know if I'd say that either. Here's what I will say. <laughs> it's probably the only show on YouTube that streams seven days a week at 12 o'clock Pacific Coast time and 3 o'clock Eastern time. I don't know what that translates into the European market, but uh, that can be said. I'll, I'll agree with that statement. Are you okay with that, Dan? I, I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take whatever you can give me. I see our chat room is live and populating. We got Josh, KLX Box Gamer, E Gamer, Sky Mebo is in the house, Legendary Gamer. Um, I saw Chloe in there earlier. We got some shout outs to you guys. If you have questions, concerns, this is live interactive. We got a few topics and things that we want to talk about. And if I don't get to your question right away, please don't, you know, all caps and spam it a million times. Just, uh, you know, be patient. We'll try and get to you. And if you start uh, being, a, being bad, we'll have to put you in a timeout. So do I explain the rules and regulations well, Dan? Everything clear? Everything's clear. I am, I'm on board. You're on board with that. All right, let's I'm, get. I'm dual. I'm dual screening, so like I, I'm trying to organize all of my 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 windows into just one screen, so I can just like look dead on. Uh, so I'm, I've popped out the chat. It's right next to your beautiful face. Now we're like we're number. I've got my pen. I've got a, a small yellow notepad to take notes just in case. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the notepad's going to do in the pen. Fingernail but... clippers. You never know. I'm going to need might need to trim my nails in the midst of all of this. <laughs> you know, I also have a, a, a an air horn. You know, you never know when you need to like you know stop the clock with this. So I'm not just. Sorry. Dan, Sorry. Dan, Dan has turned this into a MacGyver podcast. <laughs> Let me know in chat how many guys know who MacGyver is. Remember the MacGyver show? That's what Dan has sort of turned, turned things suddenly into, uh, you know. <laughs> Oh, uh, Legendary Gamer says a rule should be no Skyland discussion. It's okay to talk Skyland. I got my Minecraft shirt on. So, you know, we, we're free to talk about whatever. Just don't be, you know, trolly, shall we say. So let's get to the topic here. Let me get – I got a, a fun little graphic to share with you guys. So we're talking – we're talking Disney Infinity being canceled – um, the three games out, Disney Infinity, Disney Infinity 2.0, and Disney Infinity 3.0, multiple platforms and systems, uh, toys, many toys, I think over 100 or so from Disney characters to Star Wars to Marvel. Uh, it was definitely a, a fun experience if you were a collector, a toy collector, if you were a, a gamer. It uh, wasn't the most polished experience, but definitely a strong community um, aspect to it. Dan, am I missing anything? What's what's another positive thing about Disney Infinity we can say before we start talking about it being no more? Uh, it's the, the best part about Disney Infinity was the community, in my honest opinion. I cannot believe it, it, a community in a way that is more formed and more shaped than any other game than I've probably ever, I mean, like maybe Club Penguin is more of a, a community, but I don't know. I've never played Cl Club Penguin, but I just cannot believe the community from every part of the world that I have met, interacted with. The community of Disney Infinity is just crazy. That's, that's like the big thing for me about Infinity. Yeah, that's the way um, you and I met uh, Abe and um, Will and the guys, you know, over at Disney Infinity TV. And then, of course, you know, JB and Allison and uh, the community over making the game, the the publicity, the PR and the 
uh, executives over there, and, and some of the developers also. I mean, I've sat on a couch with like uh, Matt Soli and some developers just running me through the game and showing me showing me some game, and that's that's made it very personal and fun. Uh, it's, it appears that there is going to be a MacGyver show, according to uh, Travis. He says there's a trailer that he saw, and he said it looks bad. So I don't know, I don't know if there's truth to that, but maybe you're onto something, Dan. Maybe. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I want to talk about, so so the news came out, it's official. Um, if you didn't know this already, that's kind of the recap. So now what happened is we get the reaction. Uh, there's a hashtag save Disney Infinity. There's a uh, petition. Uh, let me see, I got a graphic for that. Let me call that up. So we've got the um, petition. This was started by Tim Wanders over at change.org. Uh, looks like he's got almost 7,500 uh, people that have sort of signed or agreed to this. I know what the phrase is. I guess you sort of sign the petition and sort of say, yes, I, I want Disney Infinity to come back. Uh, we found out uh, a few days ago from a couple articles uh, what kind of things were to be expected with as far as the Star Wars sets and 12-inch large figures, um, some of the things that they were talking about doing for Disney Infinity 4.0 should it have been a thing that sort of came out. So this is kind of the the number one thing that people Dan people have been like leaving me comments on almost every one of my videos with this link. Um, what what's your take on the petition? Well, I guess the question I get asked a lot, and I think it's an important question when it comes to this whole topic, is can we save Disney Infinity? And the answer is probably not. No, you're probably not going to save Disney Infinity. It's just not how Disney rolls. It's just not how they roll. But the petition, the letter writing campaign, the hashtags, the tweets, the videos, you guys have no idea how much you are moving the, the people at Avalanche and the people at Disney Interactive to really know that we all love them and really appreciated everything they did. And... I, I really love the fact that everyone's doing this. And I think that if you um, believe deep down in your heart and you believe in miracles, maybe Disney infinity can come back in some way, shape or form. I think you're likely going to see Disney toys to life appear in different forms than Disney infinity moving forward. But um, everything you're doing with the petition, with the letter writing, everything like that, it is just, um, it's not more so much about, saving Disney Infinity to me, it's about saying thank you to the people who've worked so hard and dedicated the past four or five years of their lives to making this game that is now suddenly gone with a drop of a hat. And they're just as bewildered. The people who make this game are just as bewildered as you and me that this game is gone now. You know, no one ever thought that it was going to be gone. So, I mean, good on you guys in the community for really uh, kicking it and just pouring out the love. It really, really is. It's being heard. If anything's going to happen because of the love that you're pouring out, probably not. I mean, the people have been fired. The, 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 the offices are closing. There's no one there to make Disney infinity anymore, but that doesn't mean that your voice cannot make a difference in one way or another. So keep talking keep screaming from the rooftops save disney infinity <laughs> so i should mention um to people in the chat and uh, the archive i will put links to uh, some of these things that we're talking about in the description below in this video archive so some of you guys have seen in chat saying how do i sign it what's the link um don't really want to get too involved with linking things out now during the live show but i'll put the stuff in the description when this video gets on the vod uh, video on demand the archive so yeah i'm with dan with a lot of these things uh, I've been in the gaming entertainment business for 15, 20 years or so, a long time. I've seen companies rise and fall. I've seen things get bankrupt. Uh, I've seen things um, get shut down, never to be returned again. Uh, I've seen sometimes, every once in a while, there is sort of a fan voice that sort of jumps out and will sort of save a game that usually kind of is a little more maybe i would say on the indie side or like through like a kickstarter indiegogo or support like that or or maybe something where the developer gets the rights to like a property back like years later and has this sort of passion project the problem with the disney affinity is disney is a huge company if you if you don't realize that disney owns many things you know it's like tv shows tv stations marvel Star Wars, 
Um, Dan, what's another what's another thing that Disney owns I'm missing? The big big mega conglomerate. Marvel, Marvel Star Wars, and um, I mean like ABC. ABC, uh, they, yes. They, they got they got all they they've got a lot of um, they've got a lot of pots cooking right now. <laughs> yeah, so like. That's a big deal when a company says, "Hey, our lawyers, our investors, our our you know financial people have decided that this is a thing we're going to take off the uh, plate." Um, you know, that's that's uh, really going to be a difficult decision to reverse and stuff. But I I will agree with Dan. I think it's a great way to sort of support um, some of the people involved and sort of show them like, "Hey, we loved the game. It was great. It meant something to us. And if there is any shed of." possibility for anything we're, we're we're hoping for that so so dan and i we're sort of on the same page the realism page right yep so being real <laughs> keeping it real uh let me jump over to uh, our buddy abe mutual friend um has uh he's got his sort of support campaign where he wrote sort of an article saying you know uh, he, get your voice heard and he wants everybody to write to a, a physical letter so, so the first the first thing we got, Tim Wanders wants you to sign a digital thing, a petition online. And now Abe wants you to actually go and get like a stamp and a letter and write a letter to Bob Iger, CEO or president of Disney, I forget his title, and actually sort of express, um, you know, what your passion and your, your love and your appreciation for the game was. Um, so, you know, writing letters, that's a thing. Um, you know, I'm just picturing like some person in the mailroom, you know, dumping out a bag of letters, you know, in front of Bob Iger's assistant, most likely. I don't know if any of these will actually get physically to him, uh, but it definitely will be an interesting way to sort of have an outpour of uh, devotion. Maybe with a letter, you can include some sketches or doodles or uh, photos or fan art. What is, Dan, what does a letter do? physically that you can't get from a, a digital petition well you can sign the petition a lot you can well you can sign it once but a lot of people can sign it and they can leave their messages they can they can show their support to the cause but um, what a letter does is put a physical thing in the hands of someone in that office in the office of Disney it, it it's you know, people don't write letters a lot anymore. People are sending emails. People are, you know, but to have a have a physical, you can send a, a dozen emails, and a dozen emails can come from uh, one guy with a dozen email addresses or something like that. But a, a, a handwritten letter letter is just like a physical proof proof you can hold that someone can hold that says yes. There's someone who took the time, paid forty two cents. They could have just sent me a free email, but they they took the time. They they paid the money. They they lick this envelope and they send it to me and they it, they really really care about that and um, uh, you know if it was only one or two letters it would probably get pushed to the side but if a hundred people send a letter five hundred people a thousand two thousand th th that's like a that's a that's a Santa mailbag full of, of letters you know that's that can't be ignored it's 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 hard to ignore a big pile of letters you know so it's really not a frivolous idea to send letters to make um to make disney know that you're not thrilled about it you know people still write a lot of people still write letters less so than you know the the, the age of people who maybe were big fans of disney infinity maybe aren't letter writers but now is the time write a letter um and uh and encourage maybe if if they don't want to continue disney infinity maybe see if they can continue the the charge somewhere else you know let's let's see if someone else wants to pick up the reins or uh you know or just show that you're you're not happy with the way things were handled it's they listen they're disney they've got to listen you're the consumer children of the world remember <laughs> you're the one watching the the videos watching the shows playing the games Disney wants to do whatever they can do to make you happy not to say that Disney Infinity is going to come back but they want to do Sorry, I'm I'm a pen. I'm, I'm I, I like to talk with something in my hands. Uh, Disney Infinity. Disney wants to do what what their consumers want, and so uh, if you write a letter and you don't have anything, ask your parents to buy you shares in Disney so you can be a Disney shareholder and make your voice heard that way because it might be more valuable as a Disney shareholder than just John Smith who loves Disney Infinity. But I digress. So, <laughs> yes, writing letters is a powerful tool. I think. 
Yeah, definitely good to have a voice. Chat room, help me decide. So Dan's got his pen. I've got a green and a black pen. Let me know in chat which pen I should hold to make my emphasis, my points, black or the green. I'll, I'll give that to you guys in chat. Travis says he remembers when Family Guy was uh, getting, what got saved after it was canceled. Can you think of some TV shows or some other video games that, whoa, what do we got there? We got aliens popping. And this has definitely been show and tell. Uh, um, you know, it's, it's not an apples to apples kind of thing to compare. I've upgraded my pen to my crazy monster pen. It's not apples and apples to compare uh, a show like Family Guy uh, or Futurama to a game like Disney Infinity. You guys have to understand that what they wrote off for Disney Infinity, the hundred, we're just going to round it up to $150 million. That's a budget that could make three or four fully fleshed out beautiful games. I mean, that's a lot of money that they just, that they just wrote off and said, we can't even save it. We're just going to let it go, you know? So sure, you can write in campaigns uh, to save your favorite TV show or to bring it back. But ultimately, the, the, the industry of, of, of artists and voice artists and stuff like that, it's, uh, it's a kind of industry where it, it, it's done project to project, where Disney Infinity was the saga, was this thing they were trying to, like, to, to move on and move on. And they had, I mean, we just saw 300 people got laid off 300 people that have been working on this game for four years. So it's not the kind of thing that you can just say, Oh, bring it back and bring back all those 300 people who were the core people who really drove the game and, and, and make it happen again. It's, it's different than, uh, you know, calling up the six people who did the voices on Futurama and bringing back the, the 10 lead artists and, uh, and making a TV show. It's, it's, it's a little bit more, uh, quite a bit more difficult. And on top of that, the toy aspect of the game was massive, huge. It was, it's, it's a massive um, part of the, of the, of the whole experience. And there was a huge cost and there's a huge process that leads up to making those toys. You don't just make those toys in, in three weeks. It takes three months to just design it and get a, get a prototype, you know, and then it takes seven months to, to manufacture them. And so, you know, it's not the, I, I hear you. I don't disagree with you that it would be nice that we could bring it back, but uh, like, like we could family guy or something like that. But I don't think that the toys to life market is dead. And I think that we will see Disney toys to life come back in one shape or another, but I, it's just not going to be Disney infinity. It's just not, it's just not going to be infinity. I don't know. What do you think, Rob? Yeah, these are some good points. Let me see. While you were talking, I was actually practicing how I was going to point with my green pen. The chat room has spoken. They want the green pen. So right now I'm, I'm holding in like a lightsaber. I'm like Yoda right now with my green green pen here orchestrating. But um, yeah, the uh, the save campaign thing, like I think I was going to touch on this a little earlier. It's a little tough when like, you know, the – the powers of B are so large and there's so much money at work that 150 million, 300 employees, you know, those are big numbers to sort of factor in to whether or not um, a petition or some letters has the weight to bring it back. I think, I think maybe I, I kind of joked about this, I think with Abe last week when we, we were talking about some stuff on our, our uh, talk show there. Uh, I said, sort of said like, well, maybe if Johnny Depp, you know, got involved and backed this project since he is, you know, three characters, uh, three figures in the game that, you know, maybe something like that some you know if a celebrity or um another group or something got involved is there yeah, a possibility but, of that at all but you know again i think it's important to say that there are 300 people avalanche studios the company that was i mean disney infinity avalanche studios is disney infinity's godfather it's it's they're the ones who made it they made it what it is who it is, how it plays, all that kind of stuff. And those 300 people, while they're still technically employed, are now all sending their resumes out. They're having interviews. They're finding other jobs. Uh, and unless it, it's an, I mean, what, we're about a week and a half now since it was canceled. I'm looking at my calendar over here. About a week and a half since it was canceled. Uh, unless they, they pull out the stops tomorrow afternoon and say, okay, we're wrong it's just not going to happen. It's, it's really not going to happen, you know? And um, uh, I just, I just really don't think it's, I, I just don't see it happening. It's just, it's way more complicated than just, and we're, I mean, Rob, you know, it's, you know, and I'm surprised. I'm really surprised that the game 
wasn't it wasn't like oh we're losing a little bit of money we got to scale down let's have some layoffs let's 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 tighten the team up let's refocus let's go at it but um it really seems like the the core problem with the whole infinity game was the toy side of things not the game side of things sounds like the toy side of things was the real big issue the fact that they just completely mismanaged and overproduced just way way too much yeah, we sort of found out some info with the uh, articles. Uh, I think Kotaku might have been – I forget who was the first article. Polygon or Kotaku was sort of saying that they overproduced, like, the Hulk figure, and none of those sold. I think that's a weird thing because the Hulk was sort of a Sony, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 exclusive. It might have turned people off to not want to buy it when it became available at, at retail. I know the Yondu figure, I think, was another one they cited as low-selling low um Figure was there was there a third or another figure that sort of um, dropped the ball? The uh, toys to uh, ga- toys to life cast uh, the podcast, which is really really great. Um, they just had on the Kotaku writer who b- broke that article, and he uh, kind of added some additional points to that. It's a long listen; it's about a three hour podcast. So, God bless you if you're going to listen to it. But um, one of the things he mentioned is that through the article and. Th- through more people talking to him now, he's starting to find out that it maybe wasn't just Hulk and Yondu. Maybe it was a lot of other characters, uh, you know, and um, that they overproduced, they overproduced a lot, a, a whole lot. And, um, uh, and uh, there's probably like a Indiana Jones type warehouse out there, just packed to the gills with figures to the point where they couldn't even really give them away. And um, uh, you know, because you would think like a store like Five and Below or like TJ Maxx or Marshalls would love that. They'd be like, "Yeah, give us give us two hundred thousand of each, and we'll we'll for the cheap, and we'll distribute them out." You know, uh, but I think that um, I think that it was more than just Yondu and Hulk. I think that was it was a, a few more characters. All right, let me let me touch before we move on. Let me let me touch on another thing. So we we, we got the petition online. Abe and Disney Kingdom want you to write some letters, and then uh, my man K Wing actually called me out in his um, his video talking about he sort of made a video. You know, he's got a YouTube uh, channel, popular YouTube channel, and actually Wombat in chat asked um, you know if it's possible to make a video or something like that. So if you if you are itching to get the word out you know if you have a youtube channel or or a website or blog or twitter instagram or you know any any one of these things facebook and you do want to sort of share the information you can you can get the word out there you know k wing sort of said you know sort of challenges big youtubers to to sign position i think a lot of us are talking about it and there's definitely some signatures whether or not we'll get a hundred thousand people sign i don't know (laughs) if that's going to be a thing but um you know i just wanted to you know, follow follow up since a lot of people have been leaving comments on my and, and whether those hundred thousand people sign and it really makes a difference, that's the other thing. You know, it's 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 hard to I mean, it's really hard. It'll be hard for just don't manage your expectations and don't expect Disney Infinity as Disney Infinity to come back. I think I think we're pretty much done. I really I really do think we're done. Um but there have been a lot of great arguments and uh, about ways that things should happen. EA should step in and buy it uh, and, and take it over and sure that's great and all, um, or, you know, Avalanche should just reform its own company and have a major Kickstarter and just start something new and great. All the, all the guys that just got fired, <clears throat> all really great ideas, but all this stuff takes a lot of money, a lot of time. And, um, and I think it's important to say that like Disney infinity now has a pretty its name has been tainted in a serious way. Every family out there that has Disney infinity is not happy that they have Disney infinity. Now, you know, people spent a thousand dollars over the course of three years for all these figures. And now they're kind of like dead in the water. And uh, I think a lot of people would be hesitant to, to, to pick Disney infinity back up if it comes back in a year and a half, you know? So I think that, you know, the best case scenario is we look forward at seeing what new and awesome things other companies can do with the Disney franchises, but not rest too heavily on, you know, Disney Infinity coming back. 
All right. Yeah, we 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 want to we want to celebrate and we want to talk about our passion and our love for the game, but we do want to be realistic. Uh, that's why I sort of emailed to Dan and said, said, "Hey, let's jump on the uh, talk show here and talk about some of the Save Disney Infinity, just to kind of give you a little bit of a different perspective, maybe on um, you know things that you're hearing or reading about, or some people I'm seeing in chat actually didn't even know that Disney Infinity was canceled. So I am a news. Um, a news YouTube channel and website, and I know Dan is as well. And speaking of that, let's let's talk about your article. You were up late last night writing your own article talking about Disney Infinity cancellation. Dan, I got to say, for a guy well spoken as yourself, you're actually a pretty darn good writer as well. I'm sort of finding out now that I'm reading your website. Tell me about the article that you that you launched last night. Yeah. So the 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 thing. I'm seeing a lot of questions being asked over and over again about the cancellation. And so uh, I, not only do I have Disney Infinity Codes, I also have on my YouTube channel, uh, Disney Infinity Codes on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, um, and I'm also a moderator of the Disney Infinity subreddit, which is a, a huge hub of Disney Infinity fans. And I'm seeing a lot of the questions repeated over and over and over again. And um, But just one question here, one question there. And don't expect from Disney whatsoever for them to really give you any information about about the cancellation um, other than the newsletter they put out there. They might put another press release out when Finding Dory comes out and the Alice figures come out, but once Dory comes out, you will it, Infinity will kind of slip away into a, a soft, quiet sleep, and we might get lucky if the servers stay up for, you know, till the end of the year, which is kind of the the, what the going chat is right now that we got the end of the year going on. But um, there are some, you know, major questions about what, what's the, what's going to happen with Disney infinity. And so I thought I'd kind of put together this nice little article about, you know, what you need to know about Disney infinity getting canceled. Why, when, who, you know, all that kind of stuff. So. Awesome. I appreciate, I appreciate that. I'll put link to that article sure. and your website. Did you, did you look through Is there any, any Disney cancellation questions you have, Rob? Oh, let me see. Wait, let me get my pen back. I put my pen down. Um, uh, the big question I have is who the heck thought it would be a good idea to do 12 inch figures of Disney infinity when you're burning money uh, from your company. D Dan, do you think that was, so if you didn't know, I guess Patrick, we'll get Patrick a shout out. He did the Kotaku article talking about some of these things uh, we're finding out and apparently large figures with uh, more detail and lineups was going to be a thing. Was this, was this going to be the thing that was going to save the Disney infinity toys to market campaign? I don't think that it was going to be, a lot of people are polarized on this and I, I'm kind of glad you brought it up because I'm on the I'm on the field where I would have loved that. If you look behind me, you can see some of my like my like nine inch, ten inch vinyl Muppet pops, mm -hmm. Muppet vinyl mations. I've got I've got I love the big the big Funko pops. I've got like the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and a couple of his different forms and stuff like that. Uh, and there was the the light FX figures were really really well received. Were really well received. People dug them a lot, uh, and so they were. And here's the thing that's really tragic is 4.0 was listening to everything that every one of the fans said they wanted. 4.0 is about to drop on top of us the Disney Infinity that we all wanted, that we all really, really wanted. And uh, one of the ways that they were going to do that was with these 12-inch figures. Now, I know you're saying, well, I didn't want a 12-inch figure and I didn't want to pay $45 for one. Well, I'll say number one. Uh, the whole reason why Disney Infinity Codes even came into existence was because of deals. And don't ever ever pay full retail for anything when it comes to video games because there's always some place you can price match some place that's on sale something that's going to be, be going on so let, me, let, me, let, me put you, let me pause you for a second Dale. let me put you on the spot something that you do on your website and your youtube and your instagram is giving out free stuff to people would you have purchased these 12 inch figures if they came out to send out to your subscribers absolutely i would have given away i probably would have given away all of them just you know one week at a time or i would have spread it out but yeah that would have been perfect giveaways and um and those figures they're they weren't just they didn't just like light up you have to remember that like they're they would be highly detailed and um you were at d23 right yes yeah every and so you were did you go you went around the like the the disney infinity art exhibit there right 
Yeah, I've I explored their like their displays. Yeah, yeah. I've seen their little prototypes. I've been to the Disney Studio in Glendale to like check out. So they have statues there of like Buzz Lightyear and Jack Sparrow and Yoda. Oh yeah, no, those like, things are those things are gorgeous. But at D twenty three and at any all the conventions in their Art of Infinity exhibit, they had these beautiful clay twelve inch maquettes of some of the figures and like their original prototype kind of like okay, we want to make Princess Leia. Let's let's do a couple of clay figures to see how we how we want her to pose, how we want her to stand, how we want her to move. And they were really detailed and they were beautiful. Um, and so the idea that they were going to be these beautiful high detailed figures, they were going to be, uh, they were going to have the light effects kind of thing. Um, if they would have given us the option to display them without the base to have them light up would have been even, even cooler because I would love for my light effects figures to light up when they're not on the base. Um, and if anyone knows how to rig uh, a Skylander portal to just plug into a USB and power on, message me or tweet me or something like that. If you're good at circuitry, I need you. We're not going to let this light up thing die. But okay, side point. But um, but on, you, know, you know, you broke a rule there. Somebody said early in chat you can't talk about Skylanders during a, a Disney Infinity, you know, show, right? <laughs> well, uh, it's funny. The D Skylanders portal is the only portal strong enough, has a strong enough NFC signal to power the light effects figures when the game, when like when a portal isn't like on and being functioned in the game. Uh, the Disney Infinity portal is actually borderline, which is why they had the thicker bases to fit a capacitor uh, inside the base of the figure to like enhance the, the NFC signal strength. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm ranting now. But uh, those 12 inch figures weren't just gonna be beautiful. They weren't just gonna be light up, but they were also going to enhance some of the original characters. We were going to get Buzz Lightyear that could fly that had laser beams, that had like really cool animations with his helmet and his wings and all kinds of cool stuff. We were gonna get that, which is what everyone's been asking. Everyone's been saying like, oh, man, we really want some 1.0. We were gonna get Jack Skellington with a whole new move set. You know, maybe he was gonna be the, uh, you know, the Pumpkin King or maybe, who knows? There was so much potential there that is lost. So I was, I was uh, on board with a 12 inch fit. When I heard that, I was like, man, uh, and the other cool thing is that that appeals to people outside of just Disney Infinity. The big figure, big figure collectors for Disney are, are huge. It's a huge thing. They still make them, you know, big figs. Yeah, I, have, when you, I have two Kermits. Wait, when you go into uh, Toys R Us, there's always like a big Darth Vader, Stormtrooper, John Cena. Um, uh, Josh in chat actually said that uh, he said they would be copying Nintendo with the Yarn Yoshi and stuff. And that I'm assuming that that large Yoshi was, was a big hit. I know it sold out well, a first time around. Yeah, I, 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 my question more so is not how, uh, well, the Yarn Yoshi, I, I don't, I mean, people are going to get mad at me about this, but the Amiibo thing just doesn't do anything for me. Uh, and, uh, and they're totally different because there's no real base and you're like tapping them on your controllers and stuff like that. Uh, we don't have to get into it, but uh, <laughs> I would be more interested to see how those 12 inch figures would fit on the base and how they would interact with the base because the infinity figures themselves now are about three inches tall. That's about all they are. Imagine an infinity figure four times the size of all the ones on your shelf. That just makes my mind want to explode of how awesome that is. And, and also the light effects figure kind of designs expanding beyond. I have a very, very good friend. His name is Fernando Velez. He does all these awesome Disney infinity light effects customs. If you've been on our website, if you've been on our YouTube channel, go check him out. He's made like an awesome glowing Maleficent. He's made a cool Ant-Man figure who's with his eyes that glow. He's done some really, really cool stuff. I should still, I have a couple of the light effects figures. I should give them away, even though Disney Infinity has gone. Um, I should do some giveaways with them. Uh, let me know if you want to win a light effects custom Disney Infinity figure. Send me a message or just subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my subscribe to my YouTube channel to tell me you want more things from me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, it's true, it's true. One of my most common comments is give me a figure, give me a game, send me a PlayStation 4, send me a Nintendo. So um, unfortunately, that's not something I do, but apparently Dan is willing to, uh, you know, spend the big bucks there. So you guys take advantage. Yeah, I, I, I love giveaways. I love giveaways. Um, uh, I'm a big believer in two things with my writing online is number one, I don't have volunteers that work for my sites. Everyone who writes for my sites get paid because they work hard and it might not be a bunch of money. They're not going to go buy a boat, but they're going to be able to, you know, buy some extra figures or, you know, some snacks or something like that with, with some pocket cash for me. And the second thing is love the fans because you guys are the ones who make everything that I do possible by supporting the site, by supporting the YouTube channel. And, um, and while I'm, I'm going to be pairing back, 
back the giveaways on Disney Infinity codes, I'm going to be ramping up the giveaways now on Bricks to Life and uh, Disneyology. And uh, that kind of opens me up to give away some cooler stuff on Disneyology.com because now I can give away like Funko Pops and that kind of stuff, uh, expand my, my Disney giveaways. But and also on Bricks to Life, I'm giving away lego dimension stuff left and right because i love it because there are kids out there there are fans out there there are families out there who don't have a ton of money laying around to be buying every figure every pack i'm a big supporter of giveaways not to say that you have to do it rob but you can just share when i'm giving stuff away so that your fans can win uh i just i just want to be part of the positive fallout like when you give something (laughs) away somehow i want somebody to see see me on a tweet and say yes i dan gave me something away and therefore coin app tv is cool also the the next time i announce a winner i'll be like this winner was brought to you by coin app tv (laughs) yeah found found in the coin app tv chat uh, yeah. we, and we got a good chat today. J- J- uh, Josh is also mentioning that Skylanders made the light core, and then Disney Infinity copied them, and then James sure. Teach disagree. It's a it's a market, and it's a competitive market, and um, there is a lot of crossover appeal. <laughs> Skylanders for was like not this. the first company though to make a toy that lights up. You know what I mean? It, it's uh, and the other thing is that when Skylanders released their light core. Um, and then, and then the timeline when Disney released their light effects figures, there ha- there was parallel thinking there. I mean, that's how this industry works. It's what can we do to make the next figure cool? Um, they didn't just pull light effects figures out of a magic hat. Um, the light effects figures actually were were going to be released at probably around the same time as the light core, but the, the Disney uh, interactive avalanche team just couldn't make them work. Uh, and then Disney Imagineers had to come in and really like reinvent the wheel. Um, you have to remember that these games, when uh, I, I just recently interviewed uh, the new voice of Princess Leia, did you see that uh, Rob? I uh, yes, I listened to it or what was that a pod, uh, audio or video? I, I did I did an audio podcast with it and then I, I posted an article about it. But um, yeah, I listened to know, it. You she said was talking. You saw it, you threw me off. You're trying to trick me there. <laughs> well, I, it was on my on my website, but okay. she talks about she talks about how uh, when they were when she was recording for Princess Leia for the Force Awakens playset, it was like a year before. Force Awakens play said the, the movie even came out like they are they are so far ahead of of everything that you're thinking and doing um because they know what's rolling out what what everything's in development so that whole Skylanders Disney copied off of this and that and yada 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 they all have elements and uniqueness and and stuff that they're tossing back and forth and and you actually got to see you were you were going to witness live the design process that took place in um, developing a figure with the with the Peter Pan figure that was announced at D twenty three last year. And what was that? Beginning of August, right, Rob? Uh, yeah. Well, they I guess they sort of got together at D twenty three in August. Yeah, yeah they, yeah. Had, they so, had a group of uh, Infinity creators, uh, toy box creators. They were going to make a. They were going to decide on what would be the next figure, and they decided with Peter Pan, which is. I would have liked to see in that Peter Pan. Let's not dwell on that too much. But what was your final final thing you wanted to well, say? Well, it's just that you were going to see the process um, of designing, saying we want this figure. Now we're going to design this figure. Now we're going to prototype the figure. Now you know. I remember in one of the recent Toy Box TVs, JV was joking about how, or maybe it was on Twitter. JV was like, "Yeah, uh, Jeff Bunker's in China right now." Um, uh, figuring out how to manufacture the Peter Pan correctly with the right pieces and stuff like that. You are watching a full process. It takes a year just from the thought of a figure, uh, and they were rushing Peter Pan. You know what I mean? It takes a year from the thought of the figure to the to to when it you know might possibly go into production and hit the shelves. So there's a there's a big long, and you know that the all these. Activision talked to Avalanche and and um, and Avalanche talked to Nintendo and you know the the video game business is very very um, you know like it's 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 huge but it's also small in terms of when you know somebody you know them for the rest of their lives and then they move on to this next thing or this next thing and then you get to meet their friends and suddenly now you know a group of ten of you that started at this little company now you're working at ten huge companies across the globe and you're all still talking to each other so there's a lot of parallel thinking and stuff like that don't think that everyone's copying off of each other and everyone's you know. They're all trying to make money, but at the same time, there's a lot of parallel thinking. 
All right, let's not get caught. This this video will be archived for years and years to come. We don't want to get too caught up on who's copying who. Um, yeah. I should I should mention that Chloe, aka uh, Lovely World, says she's going to write a song as her tribute, uh, and she wants us to help with some of the lyrics. Um, I don't know if we can get involved in that too much, but Dan, um, I'll throw out my suggestion, and then you think of one. Uh, if somebody was to write a song for Disney Infinity Tribute, uh, maybe who's a character you'd like to see in the the chorus or some of the verses? I'm going to say. Uh, um, Anna from uh, Frozen. I'd like to see in the Disney Infinity tribute song. Dan, you have a favorite you'd like to see in Chloe's? I would like. Uh, I would like the song? song to sing about all the aspects of it, from the the from the play sets to the toy box, the power discs, the figures. I want to hear. I want to hear like a like a like a verse about each of those things. That's what I would want. That's what I would want in my Disney Infinity tribute song. Okay, so we've talked uh, for about a half hour about uh, what happened the past. The potential future but let's actually talk for a few minutes about the future that we can actually control and that we know is going to happen and that is the future of all these you know speaking of tributes is my segue segue uh the future of websites podcasts blogs audio video that have kind of made a name for themselves from the last couple of years making stuff talking about disney affinity so and, and dan falls in this category as well so it'd be a good opportunity for him to talk about some of his other projects but um uh where where do uh you know where do people go from here well i think that uh it's hard it's tricky when a certain sites and stuff pigeonhole themselves into disney infinity um and i was guilty of that as well but i've um uh I've already, prior to the announcement of the cancellation, we uh, came up with the new site, Disneyology.com. It's uh, it's spelt the way it's supposed to be spelled without the Y. So, uh, you know, Disneyology with no Y. Uh, and it'll, if you spell it wrong, you're going to hit just an empty page where there's nothing there. So come visit us there because now we, we've kind of expanded out to all Disney digital toys, apps, games, that kind of stuff. Um, and then, you know, my YouTube channel, we're expanding into Disney apps and, and you know, Disney toys and that kind of stuff because we've got a following and, you know, people, people just want to still hang out and watch good stuff. And, uh, and then of course I also have a, a bricks to life, which is a great Lego dimensions uh, website where we have full guides for all the levels, the mini kits, all that kind of stuff. I'm a big fan of Lego games. I know Rob, you're not a big fan of dimensions, but I think you got to get on that bandwagon, dude. I think we might see some star Wars Marvel in the future. So, um, I picked up Lego Dimensions. I thought it was glitchy, and the puzzles, the color puzzles, really, really bored me. But I am a fan of the Lego games that aren't part of Lego Dimensions. I play a lot of those. So, you know, there's there's a good 10 years legacy of Lego games I've been playing. Just didn't really cling to Lego Dimensions. And then, of course, the big thing is super expensive, like 35 you know, bucks for play sets and $15 for figures. And that's why you should visit brickstolife.com slash deals, where we list the best prices for all the Lego Dimension sets, starter packs, all that kind of stuff every week, week after week. Uh, <laughs> so you make sure you check out there. Right now is a great time to get into it. The packs are at a great price. Everything's a great price. The nice thing about that, though, is sure, the, the starter pack was 100 bucks, but it's going to last you three years. You're not going to have to upgrade your starter pack for three years, which is kind of incredible. You know, so right off the bat, you know, and there's always sales, Rob. There's always sales. Don't ever pay full retail for Toys to Life. Don't ever do it. Um, Bad Rob. Don't pay. <laughs> You're not. They're just handing you. Everyone's. Everyone's like, well, Rob, we love you. You're so beautiful. We yeah, open. We I was, I, was say, I don't really. I don't really pay for a lot of things. But when I do um, think about my subscriber base, I think of the consumer. Well, and, you tell know, tell them you paying. want. Tell them you want Lego Dimensions. You can unbox them and then just send them to me, and then I'll play them. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it sounds like the fallout of Disney Infinity um, in May. Or increase some popularity in your Lego sort of side of things and Disney Infinity. If people who don't know me, you may be new. I also do a lot of Skylanders coverage. I know there's a lot of you know Skylanders versus Disney Infinity and this and that. But Skylanders was kind of the Toys Life game that really launched uh, a lot of my fan base and stuff. So there's more there's more out there for guys like you and me and hopefully some of the other people running shows. And I think that uh, don't don't worry about Skylanders. And don't worry about Lego Dimensions. Um, all the a, a lot of the major toy development problems that Disney faced with uh, Infinity, Lego Dimensions will have no none of those problems. None of those problems whatsoever. They have a, an age old toy making industry, just a, a massive company behind them that can help them figure out 
you know, inventory and all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of the things that caused Disney Infinity to fail, Lego Dimensions has no problem. And uh, make sure you check out Bricks to Life in the next day or two. I'm going to post a, a really nice article about um, why Lego Dimensions is going to stick around. And Skylanders, Rob, I think Skylanders will be around for a while. They're about to start start a new series, like a like a like a TV show. Um, you know, they've got. I think that it's a pretty good testament that when they've got like bed sheets and wrapping paper and, and, and gummies and all kinds of stuff, uh, <laughs> Skylanders had the disadvantage of not having Mickey Mouse or Mario or, or Peter Venkman or Homer Simpson or Gand, you know what I mean? They, they didn't have anyone except for Spyro maybe. And not a lot of people were, you know, not everyone knew who Spyro was. And I think that they've done an impressive amount of work to kind of make themselves uh, to give their characters like life, you know, so uh, don't run away from toys to life, you know, just because Disney infinity, Disney infinity, Disney got in its own way, Disney, Marvel and star Wars. And I, and, and, and let me, let me actually, let me step back and correct myself. Uh, 3.0 was not doing bad. 3.0 was not the problem. 3.0 did very well, made them a good chunk of change, was very, very well received. Uh, it, was, it was 2.0 that was the nail in the coffin. And uh, people were like, how could a, a game that came out two years ago cause, well, I mean, maybe pay, you know, keep both your eyes open in economics class when you're taking it in high school and maybe you'll kind of you know, put two and two together. But uh, the, 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 uh, the, the leadership during 2.0, and I don't know if it was one guy or a bunch of guys, but make sure that you don't point the figure at John Vignacchi on Twitter because that one dude did not make all the decisions that caused this. I don't think he made any of the decisions. If anything, John Vignacchi was like the, the voice that all of us wanted. John Vignacchi wanted to give you Captain EO and Darkwing Duck. I mean, <laughs> Disney, wouldn't have let, Disney and Lucasfilms wouldn't have been like, yeah, let's make Darkwing Duck and Captain EO toys. No, but we all... I think that JV fighting for Baloo, and Rob, maybe you agree with me, but Classic Baloo, did you play Classic Baloo, Rob? Oh, yeah, yeah, we got some, we got some Blue, what, uh, Jungle Book Blue on the channel. Character, right? I mean, didn't you, he was so much fun to play as, and that was JV. That was JV fighting for Classic Blue for you. So, um, you know, I think that JV is not the person to point the fingers at. Give him all the love. Give Jeff Bunker love because he designed all those characters and made, like, well, not all of them, but he was like the art director. You know, just keep pouring out the love. Keep making the videos. Keep hashtag Save Disney Infinity. Keep signing the petitions and sending letters and just pour that love into uh, into 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 the Disney team because they're they're you think you're upset. Their livelihood just went away, and they you guys don't know how happy you're making them by being awesome. So keep being awesome uh, and keep being awesome fans. And, uh, and, and, and the incredible team that made that is going to go on to do other cool stuff that you'll be able to enjoy and, um, and, and, and love. And those figures, I'm keeping all my figures because I love playing the game. What about you, Rob? Are you ditching your Infinity uh, figures? No, that was like one of the first comments. Was, oh, Rob, are you going to sell your collection? No, I like the toys in general. And Disney Infinity has always been, I've said this publicly, to me, Disney Infinity has been great toys with a fun game, where Skylanders is an amazing game with cool toys. It's kind of almost the reverse, but they kind of crisscross a little bit. So I won't be tossing anything out. I want to... I want to close this out in just a second but dan just since we are talking save disney infinity um i heard down the wire that uh, muppets show was canceled as well and i know you're a big muppets person will you be launching a save the muppets tv show campaign that's funny on our on my uh my puppetry podcast which if you guys are into puppets in any way shape or form sesame street disney the muppets and you can put on your adult earmuffs because it has a uh maybe pg-13 R-rated language occasionally, not all the time, but sometimes, so apologies. But uh, I'm sure you've all seen Game of Thrones or whatever, so, you know, um, or uh, Breaking Bad. But um, I'm a big, big puppet fan. I'm a big puppeteer. I love my puppets. I even got, like, little puppet pens. And, um, yes, there's been a campaign for Save the Muppets for a while. It's been on the fence, and it's it's gone away. And um, I am – it's not of a popular opinion, but I think that the Muppets should um, – go back into uh, their storage closet for about five to six years and come back uh, later when, um, when the environment circles around from superheroes and, and that kind of shows because those shows are dominating right now. The, 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 the world we live in right now is not for the Muppets. It's not for the Muppets at all right now. I, I think that um, they need to circle back around in, in a few years when the variety 
show kind of thing comes back, you know, but uh, it, it saddens me. It breaks my heart. But um, that said, HBO now owns Sesame Street and it's some of the best Sesame Street I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, if you haven't seen any of the new episodes of Sesame Street and HBO, go hop on HBO Go or, you know, follow Sesame Street on YouTube and stuff. S- Sesame Street is doing some amazing stuff now that HBO owns them. So I think that a lot of these characters just need to be in the right hands uh, before they are... Um, and, and, and sometimes just management just doesn't understand what they are and what the fans want, you know? And so, yeah, Muppets is gone. Muppets is gone. Sorry, I don't mean to end the show on like a negative uh, thing, but I wanted to, you know, give, give you a little tribute to some of the other things that you're into, Dan, uh, besides, you know, the Toys to Life. So, uh, guys, in chat, you've been awesome talking with us about Disney Infinity, and I'm sure Dan's going to collect some new subscribers since he's offered to send out some free stuff. So, Dan, thanks a bunch for uh, jumping in, talking some Disney Infinity with me. Um, it was a blast. Always a blast with you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you a bunch to the chat room. I'm not going to go through and give everybody shout outs, but I said some of you guys' names, some of the questions. Um, I'll be live streaming again Saturday at 12 o'clock Pacific Coast time, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Tomorrow, Friday, I actually have a little private meeting in the daytime. I can't talk about secret, but um, I'll be I'll be checking out some cool things. So uh, that's it for this uh, talk show. Thanks a bunch, Dan. And um, we'll see you guys on the next Coin TV Live. See you later. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.